All right, now we're going to talk about 5.2, which is inverse functions. So before we jump into inverse functions, we're going to talk about one-to-one -one functions. So a one-to-one -one function um, means that it needs to pass both the vertical and the horizontal line test. Okay, so if you remember the vertical line test, that tells if it's a function, right? So vertical line test is function or not. Horizontal line test tells us if it's one-to-one. -one. So for example, this one is not one-to-one -one because it passes the vertical line test, but it does not pass the horizontal line test. So is it a function? Yes. Is it one to one? No, because it doesn't pass the vertical, I mean the horizontal line test. This one, same thing, passes the vertical line test, but does not pass the horizontal line test, right? It hits here twice. So is it a function? Yes. Is it one to one? No. This one, does it pass the vertical line test? Yes. So it is a function. And it also passes the horizontal line test. So it's also one to one. So are the following one to one? Well, x squared, that's a polynomial, that's a parabola. So that would not pass the horizontal line test, so no. Negative 4x plus 5, well, that's just a linear equation. Would that pass the vertical? Yes. Would that pass the horizontal? Yes. So yes. The square root function looks like this. Does it pass the vertical? Yes. Does it pass the horizontal? Yes. So the reason why we're talking about one-to-one -one functions is because you need a function to be one-to-one -one in order to find the inverse. If it's not one-to-one, -one, then you can't find the inverse. So inverse functions is when we're switching our x's and our y's. So for example, if these are my function, just these ordered pairs, then the inverse function is when we switch them. So instead of negative five, negative 14, it's negative 14, negative five. Instead of negative four, zero, it's zero, negative four, and so on. So we're switching the x and the y. So same thing down here. This is our normal function. So when x is 29, y is 14, it's telling us that it's one to one. So it wants to know because it's one to one, we can find the inverse. So when we do the inverse, we're switching the X and Y. So instead of inside of the parentheses is X and outside is Y, it's reversed. So now when it's an inverse, this is the Y and our answer is X. So when X was 29, Y is 14. When Y is 14, X is 29. So we're just switching the X and the Y. So F of negative five. So that means X is the inside, Y is the outside. So when X is negative five, Y is also negative five. F of two. So when X is two, Y is three. Now this is inverse, which means we're switching. So this is saying when y is one, what is x? So when y is one, x is negative one. When y is negative five, x is negative five. Okay, so we're switching the x and y. Normal is x, then y. The input is x, the output is y. In inverse functions, the input is y, the output is x. Okay, so finding inverse functions. When we wanna find an inverse function, we want to, just like I've been saying, switch the x and the y. So we're first gonna change our f of x to a y. Then we're going to switch the x and the y. Then 
Then we're going to solve for y. So if I want to get y by itself, I'm going to subtract. Divide by 2. So we have 1 half x minus 3 over 2 equals y. But our last step is to change y into f inverse. Okay, so it wanted us to find f inverse, and then it wanted us to state the domain and range for the inverse functions. Okay, so for the inverse function, we want to find the domain and the range. Okay, well, this is just a linear function. So the domain is all real numbers, and the range is also all real numbers. Remember, if on math Excel it asks for interval notation, that would be negative infinity to infinity. If it asks, I can't remember which one it asks for. Okay, so number uh, one, part B. First step, change f of x to y. Switch x and y. Subtract 10 to the other side. Now, to get rid of a square, we would square root. And whenever we square root, we cannot forget plus or minus. And then we rewrite it with our f inverse. Okay, now for domain and range. Now, the domain of, remember, a um, square root function is that the inside has to be greater than zero. So x minus 10 has to be greater than or equal to zero. So x has to be greater than or equal to 10. Now, for the range, I would look at the domain here, because remember, they switch. So for the range, let's look at the domain of an x squared. So remember that an x squared function is a parabola, which means it's going left forever, it's going right forever. So wouldn't the domain here be all real numbers? So if the domain is all real numbers, then the range here is all real numbers. Remember when we would make those charts and we would switch them, right? So here the range would be the domain here. So because x is greater than or equal to 10 for the range, it would be y is greater than or equal to 10. So they switch, the domain became the range, the range became the domain. Um, I would like you to try C on your own and then check the answer key. For question D, it tells us right from the beginning, this is the domain of our function, x cannot equal 1. So we want to find the inverse function. So first change f of x to y, then switch x and y. So it's going to be x equals 2y plus 1 over oops, y minus 1. So we want to get y by itself, but I've got multiple y's here, and fractions are sometimes kind of annoying, right? So I'm going to make this x over 1, and then couldn't we cross multiply? So we have x times y minus 1 equals 1 times 2y plus 1. Okay, distribute. Now remember, your goal is to get y by itself. So if I want to get y by itself, I need all of the y's on one side. So I'm now going to subtract this 2y to the other side so that I can have all the y's on the one side. And I'm going to move this x to the other side. So now on this side, I have xy minus 2y equals 1 plus x. So now at least I have all the y's on one side, but I still need to get this x in the negative 2 to the other side. Well, don't these have in common a y? So now I can factor out a y 
which would leave us with x minus 2. And then I could divide each side by x minus 2. So now I have f inverse is equal to 1 plus x over x minus 2. Now, for the domain and range. Well, remember domain, the bottom cannot be 0, so x cannot be 2. And then remember, the domain from this function becomes the range. So if the domain here is that x cannot be 1, then down here the range is that y cannot be 1. Okay, so I would like you to try E and then check your answer. What I will say though is be careful because there are two answers for this one and I will put both of my work for both answers. Okay, so go ahead and check your um, answers after you do C and E. Okay, the next thing with inverses is that we need to verify that two things are an inverse. So for example, if I had the ordered pairs 2, 1, and then negative 1, 0, and then negative 2, negative 1. So here's my f of x. It wants us to now graph f inverse. So remember that we learned that f inverse of x would be switching x and y. So it would be 1, 2, 0, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 2. So 1, 2, 0, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 2. So we get this. Well, what do you notice about that? See how they kind of cross? That's because they are reflected over the line y equals x. So the blue was flipped. It's a mirror image over this line y equals x. So same thing, if I wanted to graph 2x plus 3, I would go to plus 3, then our slope is up 2 over 1. So here's f of x. Now f inverse, remember our g, I guess this is g of x technically. Remember to find inverse, we would switch x and y. So we'd have x equals 2y plus 3, subtract the 3 over, divide by 2. We get 1 half x minus 3 over 2 is f inverse or g inverse. So we go to 1 half, negative 1 half. And then we go up one over two, up one over two. Oops, I was messing up. Oops. So this is g inverse, and if you look, they are reflected over the line y equals x. So the reason I'm talking about this is because when we want to verify if something is a function, we want to make sure it was reflected over the line y equals x. And the way we do that is by using our composite functions. So we're going to use composite functions to help us verify. So if we plug f inverse into f and we get x, great. Then we also have to plug f into f inverse and get x. The reason this is an x is because it needs to be reflected over the line y equals x. So if this happens, that means it's reflected, which means it is an inverse. So here are our two functions and we need to verify. So we need to do f of f inverse. So I'm going to plug f inverse into x. So 2 
times 1 half x minus 3 plus 3. Okay, well, 2 times 1 half would give us 1. So then we have x minus 3 plus 3. Minus 3 plus 3 is 0, so we get x. Great. Okay, now we have to go the other way. So now we have to do f inverse of f. So I'm going to plug f into f inverse. So 1 half and then x is 2x plus 3 and then minus 3. Well, plus 3 minus 3 will cancel just leaving us with 2x. Half of 2 is 1, so all I'm left with x. So now I've shown that both of these are inverses. Okay, I would like you to try example 2 on your own. Um, let's do 3 together. So 3, we first have to do h of h inverse. So we're plugging h inverse into at h. So 1 over 1 over x plus 1 and then minus 1. So we plugged this in for x here. Well, minus 1 plus 1 will cancel, giving us 1 over 1 over x. Multiply by the reciprocal, we just get x. Now let's do h inverse of h. So we're going to plug h into h inverse. So 1 over x plus 1. Multiply by the reciprocal, we get x minus 1 plus 1. The minus 1 and the plus 1 cancel, giving us just x. Try 4 on your own. Check your answers on the answer key. 